You're good. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Friday, June 26 Park and Rec meeting. Uh, before we start the meeting, as a preliminary matter, this is Chris Gerstel, Chairman of the Needham Park and Rec. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons that anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond, respond in the affirmative. Cindy Chaston. Aye. Michelle Geddes. Yes. Aye. Aye. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Stacy Mulroy. Yes. Angela O'Connor. Yes. Kristen Wright. Here. No speakers. Uh, good afternoon. This is the open meeting of the Needham Park and Rec Commission it is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's orders suspend the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. Uh, the order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as the reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Needham Park and Rec Commission is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to share your screen of your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. This is a public. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear con conduct uh, of our business and ensure accurate act meeting notes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda after that. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Uh, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will ask as members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all the public commentators, uh, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call. Boom. All right, Stacy, the floor is yours with the agenda item that we have on for today. Well, the first agenda item is if there's any uh, open forum or public comment. I do not see any questions on the question box. So if you permit me to move on to the next item. I, I do. Thank you. Um, so our action item for today is the pool policies, which were uh, paused at our last meeting. You received the document with the options and we are asking that the commission pick one of the options for us to move forward with for the uh, pool season, summer season. Okay. Uh, do you want to present or do you want me to kind of go over what those options are or who would like to present those options? I can present the options if... That would be great. Okay. Um, the first option is Tuesday to Sunday with lap swimming only being allowed during the weekday, so Tuesday to Friday um, in the mornings. And then in the afternoons, Tuesday to Friday, there will be family swim slots along with on the weekends, Saturday and Sundays, also entirely family swim. Okay. Uh, and then the second option is the Monday through Saturday option with the lap swimming again being weekdays, Monday to Friday in the mornings only. In the afternoon, will be family swim, and then on Saturdays, an additional day of family, uh, family swim times. No lap swimming on the weekends. Okay. All right, um, I'll go down the line of commission. Uh, Commissioner Chaston, what say you of which option you would go for? Um, and Stacey, or could discuss. you- discuss. Yes, Stacy, could you just repeat the Tuesday through Sunday option again? I'm sorry, I was writing it. I don't have the document in front of me, sorry. Sure. 
Um, so in the mornings on Tuesday through Friday will be lap swim, four slots available for lap swimming for time slots. And in the afternoons, there'll be three time slots in the afternoon for family swim. On the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, there'll be four time slots available for family swim. Okay. All right, so not surprisingly, I have a couple of questions on that. Um, and I know we, <laughs> I know that that's a surprise. Um, so under which scenario do families get more time to swim? Is it the, the second scenario, Monday through Saturday, or the Tuesday through Sunday? I, I, There's a slight edge on the Tuesday through Sunday. Okay. And the lap swimmers, a follow-up then, is the lap swimmers have less time on the that's Tuesday through Sunday. So it's, that's kind of the difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I did read the documents and I read the emails that, I, that have come. Um, I am still a very big proponent of Tuesday to Sunday. I think it, it in my, my, recall, my, my, my estimation, it is four weekends. Maybe it spills over to a fifth, but I think it's four weekends. And we're giving the community Saturday and Sunday, which I think is when most families have time to go to the pool. And I do believe that closing on a Monday from a community point of view is not as big a deal as being closed on a Sunday. Now I know that presents some staffing challenges, um, but I'll say two things. Last year we had a seven day a week program and we had a full summer. And I know it was difficult and we don't want to replicate last season, but this season it's going to be four weeks and it's only going to be six days. And we're not opening until the end of July, which is, um, you know, leaving people all of July with no public pool option and need them. So I feel pretty strongly that the Tuesday through Sunday option is the right one for the community. And if we can at all swing it with our staff and manage the cleaning on Mondays, then I think that's the option that we should take. If, if you come back to me, you meaning Stacy and your staff and say, we just can't do it, then I would respect that. But I think if you really felt that way, you wouldn't present the two options. So I'm, I'm strongly in favor of the two days, and I think we've already held the community back as much as we um, have had to, but as much as we can with fields and programs, and um, just think it would be the time that if we can swing it, we should be open on the weekends. And if our summer staff has problems with working Saturday and Sunday, um, I don't know what to say. I think that we should be able to resolve that either with with some creativity in, in, in the ships or maybe different staff. I, I'm just, I'm, you know, it is a summer position for them and I know that they are young people, but my experience with most of these young people is that they are very responsible or they wouldn't be lifeguards and this kind of staff in the first place. That's, that's, my, that's my say. Okay, Michelle. Yeah, I agree <clears throat> with Cindy's with her comments and with the proposal to um, keep the pool open on the weekends. I really feel like from a community perspective, that is the most important days to be open. Um, even if it is limiting to the lap swimmers, which I appreciate and I think we sh should try to accommodate, but we do have other days in the week where that is available. Um, so I, I agree with Cindy's assessment and would support option one. Um, I am also in agreement. I mean, I see benefits of both. And as it's stated, it's a slight edge for the Tuesday through Sunday. But I just feel in regards to the community, Tuesday through Sunday is the, is the, the better of the options. And they're both good, but it is the better of the options. Um, so I think we can all agree that we're going to go for the Tuesday through Sunday. We will put it to a vote. The only thing that I would just want a little clarification on or make a suggestion is I think the Tuesday through Friday ideas that we have are perfectly fine. My only question for Saturday is, do we really need to do that first shift from 1030 to noon? Would you entertain just being consistent in every day that we're open? We're open from 1.30 to 7? 
it just seems it, to me, and please, you know, let me know if this is wrong thinking of, you have a staff come in at 10.30, work till noon, and I understand you then have to give them a break, so you're kind of then pausing the day and then restarting it again. It would just make more sense to me to have consistency of we open every day for family swim at 1.30, six days a week. And if we find out that later when the restrictions come out for maybe phase three, if we do have the option to adding more time, we have that open spots earlier in the day. I, it just, I mean, again, it, it for staffing wise too, I think we could go with the same staff. If we brought in a 1030 crew, we probably maybe have to have a third staff. Um, I know we said that they're kind of out there and pouring in, but I don't want to kind of overpromise and underdeliver. So I think with the option of just not having the 1030 swim on Saturday and just being consistent of Monday through, excuse me, Tuesday through Sunday, family swim is 1.30 to 7, with the lap swimming being Tuesday to Friday. Chris, I think the staff can 100% support that. Definitely, we were going to have to be more creative on the weekends about our staffing so that we would be asking the staff to work such long shifts and we may we were going to have to pull in more people than originally anticipated so mm -hmm. the commission prefers that we open for just the afternoon for family swim on the weekends then we're happy to move forward with that okay i mean just like i understand we have to give them a break and i'm all for that it just seems that they come in they start right as they get going and then that's ah, break time and then they get back into it so why not just hit the ground running starting at if they have to be there at for 1 30 they get there at one just to kind of be consistent it's a cleaner message too i think what do uh with cindy and michelle what do you think about a proposal like that and i'll go to cindy first and then michelle um i i'm i'm fine with that i would defer to the staff um i won't pretend that i know how to do staffing and how to man these shifts and, and um, set it up. So I would defer to the staff if that makes it easier and you think the public is okay with that, you know, we won't get too much pushback. I think that's fine with me. So I, I don't have an objection to it. I would defer to, uh, to you, Chris, and to the staff. Michelle, any further comment or are you kind of in line? Anything you would like to add to that suggestion? No, I mean, I support that. I, I think the, if we can take advantage of a longer period of time on the weekends, I think we should, but given the restrictions that we're working with, I, I can agree that okay. we could go with a shorter time frame. I do think, I, I know we talked about you know, coming to an agreement that, you know, regardless of what changes in the summer in terms of regulations, that we would keep the staffing the same and the hours the same. And I guess I would ask that if there is any loosening of restrictions that we would like where people didn't have to be set on a, a set shift and there would be a little bit of an, an inability to you know, lengthen the time that they could work, that we should look at ways of um, opening the pool earlier on, on Saturday if we can do that. Well noted. I think that's a good, I think it's definitely a good idea. Um, um, Stacy, go ahead. Yeah, I think if you want us to start and keep it the same for the afternoons and then we can see how the phases roll out and then we can, you know, change the weekend hours, then I, I think it's much easier to add than subtract. So okay, we're happy good. to start with the afternoon hours and then see if it opens up after okay. that. Do you need me to make a formal, uh, I guess? <laughs> Kristen's uh, not here. So, okay, that's a yes. All right, so uh, I would like to propose that the pool hours of operation for the Rosemary Complex, that we will be open Tuesday to Sunday as normal operating days. For Tuesday through Friday, from 7 a.m. to 12.30, we will do lap swimming. We will then have a mandatory one-hour break so we can sanitize and clean up the facility. And then on again, Tuesday through Friday, we will open up for family swimming from 1.30 to 7. Continuing on that week for Saturdays and Sundays, the Rosemary Complex will only be open for family swimming from 1.30 to 7. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Noted. Second. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> any, further Sorry. any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the motion say aye. Cindy Chaston? Aye. Michelle Geddes? Aye. 
The chair is also in aye, so it passes unanimously. Thank All you. All right. Anything else that we have on the agenda? We have one more thing on the agenda. Go right uh, ahead. And I will. So oh, it, it's about the pool memberships for 2020. We are still selling pool memberships for 2020. Okay and they are good for this year and for the 2021 season. Mm -hmm. uh, the staff is inquiring, as am I, about how long we wanna continue offering the two season membership price um, throughout the summer. Now, we are still working internally on our registration process and exactly how it's going to go. But I can tell you that for the moment, members will have a chance to register for time slots ahead of non-members. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm not sure that we should consider running these memberships all the way through to the end of the season. I do think we should give the residents some time and not just cut it off today, maybe an additional Three. week or so. Um, and I will ask, um, you know, I think logistically it just, it'll make it cleaner if we're not worrying about an, on a rolling admission of memberships as we're trying to figure out time slots. Um, because I think once we open those time slots, the, um, the sport, the, the software system, which is meh, at best is, is going to be pretty busy. So we, we don't want to have to m m keep track of also who's adding on memberships throughout the summer. Agreed. Um, so I didn't know if there was any uh, recommendations from you about when you would like to cut off that option. Because people can still sign up for their slots. They would just pay, mm -hmm. it would be a pay as you go. So they wouldn't be cut off entirely. Would you so say a, a two week time prior to when we open? So if we're, again, hypothetically, we're opening up July 27th, would you say two weeks prior would be a well enough time to suspend or stop selling of membership. So that would give people one, two, that would give them three more weeks to buy memberships. Is that a suitable time? Too long? Not enough? I'm gonna defer ultimately to Kristen on that who deals with this, the software system the most. I would think that two more weeks would be plenty of time and giving us more time to figure out the time slots. So okay. it'd be three weeks before we open. But Kristen, can you weigh in on this? And Angela, if you have any thoughts on it as well. Um, I think I think that two, two weeks is probably fine. I think that like either the 10th, the 8th or the 10th, um, which are just Wednesdays when we typically make changes to our registration, I, I would suggest those days. Um, I don't think the 17th is necessary, but if you wanted to go until the 15th, I think that's suitable. Um, I don't know. We don't, we don't know how it's going to go, right, once we post the policies. So at least if we give people time to read through how we're going to keep them safe this summer at the facility, that can give them the option if they haven't yet registered. But at the same time, on the other side of that coin, which is the other side that um, we've talked about, is um, we once they see the policies, some people might want refunds. You know, some people might at that point want to not take part in the membership anymore, which is a possibility, of course. Um, so I think, you know, two, two and a half weeks, three weeks, that's all fine. Um, I, I think it would mostly depend on when we put the, the time slots on sale. So if we want to get them on and up and running, I would, I would even suggest going until like the 8th of July and then have the first couple time slots maybe go up, you know, that first, that next week. Is it awkward to close on a Wednesday? Like, wouldn't you close on a Friday or is it, or is Wednesday just kind of a, uh, something we've been doing in the past. When's is typical in the past, but I mean, Friday is fine. That's, okay. I mean, we always like the early bird always ends on April 1st. It doesn't matter, or sorry, April, what? April 15th. So it okay. doesn't matter what day April 15th is. It just shuts down April 15th. Right. Um, so I think this year that was a Friday. Okay. Uh, Cindy or Michelle, what do you think? And then I'll go to Angela. Uh, I think once the policies are posted and they, assuming the policy says July 27th is our opening date, um, I wouldn't have a problem closing it by July 8th or July 10th. I mean, I'm assuming this policy is going to get out fairly quickly after today. I don't know when that is next week sometime. 
right? Early next week, would you think? Um, I would say if you give people till the 10th, then they'll have more than a week to read it and, and to decide if they either want to buy a pass or to get out of their pass. And then I think we close it. And then the staff focuses on everything else around operating this pool, whether it's time slots, reservations, or operations of the pool. And I say, give yourselves enough time to do all that. And don't be um, you know, worrying about this reservation system in terms of new passes. I think that's enough time. People have certainly been aware of what's going on um, you know, you can't miss the news these days. So, um, I, you know, I, I would go no later than July 10th, quite honestly, because I think that gives you guys more time to work on it. But that's my recommendation. Michelle? Yeah, I think that's <clears throat> fine. I think it's hard that it's the hol these are the two holiday weeks and people are going to have some activity, not as much as they may have previously, but it, it is the two weeks around the holiday weekend. Um, but I do think once people can see what the policy looks like, I think including what kind of the, what options they have, how many time slots on average do we think one family could sign up for, um, it will help people decide whether or not they feel like they need to even get a membership for this year. Um, so I, I think it makes sense. I just think we're gonna have a situation where people are gonna want to, to make exceptions. There'll be people that will decide that they would like to sign up the day before. Um, and so just having a plan in place of how we're gonna handle that, which I'm sure happens all the time <laughs> around deadlines. Um, go ahead. Well, we will still sell daily passes or is it? I, I think we, priority. No, sorry, it's just, it's all members, that's it. No, so the but by having a membership, you would get priority, and you would okay. not have to pay any additional monies. Yeah, right, um, right. What you voted on your last meeting was after that, it's five dollars per person. Okay, that's good. All right, thank you, thank you. Forgot that. All right, um, Cindy. Uh, could you remind me how many past? we've sold to date because that may be helpful if you were going to buy a pass but you saw you know 800 families have already bought passes so if I buy one I'm unlikely to get even one time slot in that four week period so um, I don't recall how many family passes I think you told us last time Kristen and I just don't recall looks like she's pushing pulling it up right now so if you oh. just a second she's uh I want to say it was like four something like 426 yeah, because I did, that might make a difference. That would make a difference to me. If I looked at a large number of passes already sold, I would think, well, the chance of getting a time slot are pretty limited. So anyway, that, that's my only question. Sure. Um, so we, we have had a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some sales since um, we announced that we were rolling the membership over because the last number I gave you was before that decision had been made. Um, at this point, we have 600 and, uh, sorry, 639. Um, that's a lie. I'm sorry, that included tennis badges. Uh, 460, I'm sorry, the, te the tennis badges got mixed in, um, which actually is, left, is about the same. I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit further. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take the question, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Or at least in that we're at least in that ballpark. All right. Um, so I think we should go with yes. Yeah, so we'll cut it off of let's look at the calendar. I think we're looking at cutting off sale of season passes being last time to buy is Friday, June, uh, June, Friday, July 10th. Okay. Any so we need to make a motion on that? I'd like to make a motion that the Needham Park and Rec Commission suspend the sale of season passes starting Friday, July 10th. Second. All right, we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Cindy Chaston? Aye. Michelle Geddes? Aye. The chair is also an aye, so it passes unanimously. Yay. Anything else that we have on the agenda, Stacy Mulroy? Nope, that is it for this quick meeting. Thank you. All right. No, yeah, listen, I know. I think this is important. I think we've got to a good resolution. And, you know, as we mentioned, as if regulations seem to get a little bit more relaxable, if we can fit more and maximize the pool, 
on the weekends. So we're going to try our hardest, but I think the plan that we have right now is good for the community and will benefit as many people as we can. So I, I appreciate all the hard work everybody did on this. It's not fun, but I think we got something good here. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Motion to second. All those in favor? Cindy? Aye. Michelle? Aye. I am also an aye. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.